Today we're going through some of the bottles I picked up in the month of June that I have really been enjoying. Welcome to Average Joe's Whiskey, my name is Joe. Today I'm going through some of the bottles that I picked up during the month of June that I really have been enjoying drinking. I'm not sure exactly how many bottles I picked up last month, but I do have six or so that I am really happy with. These are all bottles that I've really been enjoying and I haven't had the opportunity to put them in any other videos yet. So I figured I'd just make a video sharing some of the recent bottles that I picked up. So first up on this list, Bullet 12 Year Rye. So this is a 95.5 MGP rye aged for 12 years, put out by Bullet. This comes in at around $59.99 and it is delicious. To me, this is on the same level as like a Knob Creek 12. Maybe not quite on the same level as a Knob Creek 12. No, I think I'd put it on the same level as a Knob Creek 12. 60 bucks, 12 years old. It's a little bit lower in proof. Knob Creek 12 is 100 proof. This is 92. But man, MGP Rise really do well in oak. It has some really, really beautiful oak notes on the nose. Very minty, a lot of vanilla, a lot of oak. If you like those sweet oak notes on older whiskeys, this is one of the most beautifully oaked whiskeys you can find at this price point. For 60 bucks, there's really not much else that gives you these notes. It's like a peppermint vanilla ice cream. My first thought when I had a sip of this was I should blind this against the Michter's 10 year rye. The Michter's 10 year rye absolutely kicks its ass. They're not on the same level, not even close, but everything you love about a Michter's 10 year rye, you get a piece of it with this bullet. And for a fraction of the price, I think it's a pretty good deal, honestly. So bullet 12 year rye, it's not a Michter's 10, but what, what is a Michter's 10? other than a Michter's 10. But as you can see, I've definitely been enjoying this bullet. I'm probably gonna have to pick up another one of these before too long. All right, moving on. Next bottle on the list that I have been thoroughly enjoying, Bardstown Amroot collab. So if you're not familiar with Amroot, it is a Indian whiskey company. Uh, they make a lot of Indian single malts. This is a blend of mostly rye whiskey, I think. All right, so this is a blend of 43% nine-year-old rye whiskey, 20% eight-year-old rye whiskey, 17% 14-year-old Kentucky bourbon, 15% 10-year-old Kentucky bourbon, and 5% 11-year-old Kentucky bourbon. So this blend of bourbon and rye, they then finish in Amroot Indian single malt barrels. And I cannot even tell you how much I love this bottle. It's not as single malt forward as you might think. If you're not a big fan of single malts, I don't think that's, I don't think those are the notes you're gonna get off of this. It does have those single malt notes, but they're very subtle. This is just very spicy on the nose, like baking spicy, not like pepper spicy, like cinnamon, allspice, brown sugar, a lot of brown sugar, it's very, very sweet nose. And then on the palate. On the palate, it just delivers everything that the nose promised and more. The single malt notes on here are very subtle. They're very subtle. To me, there's more maltiness in like a Little Book Chapter 7 or that Ragged Branch Cowboy Cut that I love so much. All of those have more prominent malty notes, even though this was finished in single malt barrels. This bottle is just pure sugar and spice. Great mouthfeel, comes in at 110 proof. It is priced on the higher side, as all Bardstown collabs are. So this is about $160 retail. But for me, this is an excellent bottle. This is worth that hefty $160 price tag. Bardstown killing it with their new Amroot collab. Next up, we have Elijah Craig Barrel Proof B524. So I had heard a lot of mixed things about this batch before I tried it. I was able to pick up a bottle at a ABC drop last month and comes in at 11 years, two months old. So a little bit older than the A batch, obviously not as old as the C batch from last year. 
and below their traditional 12 year age statement. But it does come in at 130.6 proof. So they really upped the proof on this batch. When I first tasted it, it came off really nutty and it drank a little bit hot to me. But as I've had a few pours out of the bottle, it's really mellowed out. And even though the age is not quite what Elijah Craig Barrel Proof used to be, this kind of feels like a classic Elijah Craig Barrel Proof batch. At least it drinks that way, in my opinion. Yeah, I hardly get any of that nuttiness anymore. And the heat has come down like a notch or two. I don't think it drinks quite 130 proof, maybe like 125 or so, but this is just pure brown sugar. This is just brown sugar and cherry. It's a lot of those classic Elijah Craig barrel proof notes that frankly, I think the A batch was missing. The A batch was a little bit off profile. I think I enjoyed it more than most people did, but it was definitely off profile. This is, to me, this is like a much more of a classic Elijah Craig barrel proof flavor profile. So if you're a fan of that, I think you're gonna like this bottle. And despite being younger than 12 years, 75 bucks for an 11 year old barrel proof whiskey, Come on, man. Still a great deal. You're never gonna convince me that Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is not an excellent deal. Excellent value for the money. Good job, Heaven Hill. So the next bottle on this list is Nulu Double Oaked Rye. So this one is actually a barrel pick from DMV Spirits. Shout out to DMV Spirits. I swear, this is one of the best bottles that I have tried this year. One of the best ryes for sure. To me, this tastes like Sagamore Double Oaked, but at cask strength. So this is 117.6 proof. It was finished for a year and four months. So that is an extra long finish. It's got a beautiful, beautiful dark color. Now I absolutely love Double Oaked ryes. The uh, Sagamore Double Oaked I'm in love with. The Jack Daniels Twice Barreled Rye is one of my favorite whiskeys out there. And to me, this is on the same level as that Jack Daniels Twice Barreled Rye, but it's available if you live near DMV Spirits or if you live near anywhere that's doing Nulu Double Oaked Rye Barrel Picks. So this is another MGP rye whiskey. It is a 95.5 MGP. I don't know exactly how old it was before they put it in the second barrel. I think it was in that six to seven year range. So this is probably like seven to eight years old. It's got all the notes I love about a rye whiskey and it's got all the notes that I love about a double oaked whiskey combined. I swear to you, this bottle is on the same level as any of the ryes that I own. The Jack Daniels Twice Barrel, the Michter's Barrel Strength. I might have to blind them at some point because I feel like this has a shot at beating them both. I really think it's that good. So if you live in the DC area, I would seriously go to DMV Spirits and pick up a Nulu Double Oak Rye. I just, I am absolutely in love with this bottle. I really like Double Oak Bourbons, but Double oaked ryes to me are just like another level of good. The rye just really goes well with that double oaked flavor profile, in my opinion. But what the hell do I know? Next up, from Ever North Spirits, this is the Night Stalker, volume two. So this is from the Bourbon Junkies whiskey brand, Ever North Spirits. This is actually my first bottle from Ever North or from Virtue as it used to be called. And I was really impressed with this. Obviously they have a lot of experience in whiskey and I wasn't really sure what to expect considering most of the whiskey in here is not super old. It's not super young either, but honestly this kind of blew me away. It's a blend of 4.8 year old Sagamore bourbon, Sagamore high rye bourbon, 4.7 year old Sagamore low rye bourbon, five and a half year old Sagamore low rye bourbon, and then seven and a half year old high rye MGP bourbon, and seven and a half year old low rye MGP bourbon. So it's a mix of 
basically five to seven year old high rye and low rye bourbons from Maryland and Indiana. Comes in at 120 proof. I forget what the price was for this bottle. I think it was 80 or $90, not including shipping. This is just candied fruit for days. All kinds of candied cherry and apple, like caramel apple, just a very sweet fruit forward nose. But it's got some baking spice in there to kind of balance it out. It's got a great mouthfeel, doesn't drink 120 proof. I feel like it drinks closer to 110. Like you could really get in trouble <laughs> drinking this whiskey. It's that sweet. Yeah, super delicious. Excellent job to the Bourbon Junkies. Excellent job to Evernorth Spirits. You guys are really on the right track. I'm very impressed with what you've been putting out. Well, very impressed with this bottle. That's the only one I've tried, but credit where credit's due. Good job, guys. So the last bottle on my list that I picked up last month, this is kind of going to be cheating because it's not really a bottle. It's three bottles and it didn't come out last month. It came out last year. This is the Hardens Creek set. So I was at DMV Spirits where I picked up the Nulu Double Oaked Rye barrel pick and they're trying to get rid of these Hardens Creek sets since they're from last year and the price was good. So I figured I'd pick one up. I had tried the Frankfurt which I did really enjoy. I've been through a little bit of all of these now, and I have to say that the Claremont is my favorite. The Claremont just has some beautiful oak notes on the nose and on the palate. The Boston's good. The Boston is much less oak forward. So if you're not a huge oak fan, you might really like the Boston. It's a lot nuttier, more of that classic Jim Beam peanut. And then the Frankfurt, Frankfurt's definitely on the oakier side. It's much more similar to the Claremont, but it's a little bit more subtle than the Claremont, I think. But man, yeah, I just can't get enough of the Claremont. Honestly, I like all of these. I've really been enjoying all of these. I believe they all are 16 years old. They're all 110 proof. Same whiskey, same mash bill. They're just aged in slightly different locations. They do come in at 200 milliliters each. So this adds up to like 600 milliliters, not quite a full bottle. And this set came in at 149, which is to be fair, a lot cheaper than I had seen it previously. But 150 for three excellent 16 year old Jim Beam whiskeys. I couldn't turn it down. Just the texture on these are fantastic. I really figured this was gonna be like a one-time purchase, but I might have to go get another one of these sets because I don't just love one of them, I love all of them. I still stand by the fact that I think Claremont is my favorite, but the other two are so good as well that if I had the opportunity to just buy a Claremont or to buy the set again, I think I would buy the set again. It's really cool to see how these whiskeys turned out so differently, considering they were made the exact same way, just aged in slightly different locations. So I think it's cool. I really like the set. I really like the whiskey. So I'm gonna wrap it up here with this being the last bottle or bottles that I bought in June that I am still really enjoying but anyway that's all i got for today i really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch don't forget to hit the like button and i will see you next time on average joe's whiskey good night